Hey folks, so it's been quite some time since I last made a video for this channel. So I thought today uh, I might just have a bit of a chat with you guys about, uh, you know, where I've been, where I'm going, what the situation is, and, uh, you know, everything in between. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the Linux distributions I'm using, why I'm using them, and just some thoughts on the wider Linux landscape, because I feel that... The Linux landscape um, has changed a lot since, you know, beginning making videos about Linux on this channel. But even in the past two or so years, it seems to have been turned on its head. And I think that there is a good uh, opportunity here for some, um, uh, you know, for, for a review, I guess. But uh, before I do all that, I would like to do a bit of a tea review. Um, so aren't you guys fortunate this video is a bit of an extravaganza, but um, these days I don't seem to have too much um, time uh, to be able to, to make videos and I'm going to talk a little bit about that so I thought I might just do it all in one big extravaganza for you so um, wonderful there. Uh, for those of you that probably aren't going to watch the entirety of this video um, I'm also going to share a little bit of the uh, the cliff notes about uh, about where I've been and where I'm going uh, so uh, and I will focus on them a little bit more towards the end but the long short of it is that I've got a new job it's a wonderful new job writing for my local paper um, and I I'm uh, still in the process of settling in because it's a pretty, uh, you know, there's a job with a lot of dimensions to it, as you might expect. And uh, it's one of those things where you're sort of continually meeting new people in the community, even though I've lived here my entire life. So, um, but uh, now that I, I sort of I'm a little bit more in the swing of it. Uh, it's given me an idea of, of scheduling and, and, and what I can manage around those time frames. Now, that being said, the number of videos that are going to go up on this channel is likely to be significantly reduced. So I thought I might just sort of tell you that up front now. I'm still going to try and make content for it, but it is going to be fitting around a, you know, a work schedule. So uh, there's that. And um, Given the nature of the job, I also sometimes work, uh, have to work sort of unusual hours, you know, evenings and, and weekends on occasion, uh, because, you know, the news does not happen uh, Monday to Friday, nine to five, as you might expect. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and the structure of things uh, later on. But I promised you guys a tea review, and this is a particularly interesting tea. Now, I've got it here, but I've also got the packet here. Uh, this is a uh, boisserie. Um, and this is a uh, vanilla tea from Mauritius. Um, it's uh, and and it's a wonderful little gem. Now I've shared it with a few uh, members of my friends and family. Members of my friends, I don't know, a few a few friends and family members. And it's a um, and we have mixed opinions on t on how you serve this this tea. I personally um, have have had it black without milk, but a lot of people I know, or the handful of people I know, I should say, uh, prefer to have it with milk. Now, um, I've had it a few times now, and uh, it's a uh, it's a loose leaf tea, so you're going to have to want to brew it uh, like you would brew uh, a, a loose leaf tea. See, that is that is a really good tea. Now, I am not necessarily the most adventurous person in the world when it comes to teas. I do tend to just stick to the old PG tips. And one of the things I really do like about teas, and I think I mentioned this in my last tea review, is that uh, for me, the real enjoyment of a tea is like a warm, comfortable blanket. It doesn't need to be new or exciting. It needs to be familiar and comfortable. Um, now, that being said, once in a blue moon, you might want to try a new uh, blanket, see if the grass is in fact greener on the other side. And, well, whereas I'm still going to be thinking of PG tips when I retire in the evenings, um, this is actually a, a breath of fresh air, really. Now, the thing is, when you have these flavoured teas, it can be very easy for the, the flavour to be overpowering. It can be... Um, you know, it can be all about the the particular. You know, you know, the vanilla in this tea does not is not overpowering. The vanilla in this tea is a subtle hint, which just makes it interesting. And that, to me, is uh, you know what a tea should be. But you still have that warm, sort of earthy, familiar taste to it that really just um, you know it's what tea is all about. It's it's what you hope for when you settle down in the evenings for a nice cup of it. Mmm, delicious. Um, and. So, like I say, uh, you know, friends and family of mine, many of which prefer to serve this with milk. I've not even tried it with milk because I don't feel it needs to. When you've got your PG tips or your your, your Typhoon tea or your Twinings or anything like that, uh, and it is your sort of your English breakfast type of tea, 
I personally feel that you really do need milk with it. Um, now, I've tried it with various other types of milk. I've tried it with things like soy milk and rice milk. And, the, the you know, if, if you're of the vegan persuasion, I would say that soy milk is probably your best bet when it comes to uh, what milk you add in for your, your PG tips. But I'm sure there are a variety of opinions on that. And, and vegans among you, please feel free to let me know your preferences in that regard down in the comments section below, because you guys have going to be more experienced in that field than I am and I my experience with non-dairy milks is pretty limited as well if I'm completely honest but um to be honest in a lot of cases um for for you know non usual British teas or non usual sort of English or, or when I say English teas I mean teas that we just you know we have here in Britain um that, that are often you know so with that in mind this is nice this is enjoyable I've had several uh several cups of this now um just as a um just as a uh just just for variety's sake and i must say um yes thoroughly uh, thoroughly enjoyable um so if you happen to be in mauritius i don't know if this is an international brand this um um i do not believe so because it says it's a product of mauritius um on the box but if you happen to to visit or live there then uh, yeah it is it is something that i can certainly recommend now uh, that being said um there are, of course, you know, vanilla teas are not necessarily unique to Mauritius. I'm sure you can find them uh, in, in many tea shops. Um, uh, we have a nice tea shop in town, actually, which is... Uh... But anyway, that that aside, um, yes, um, it gets my personal thumbs up. I'm not going to rate it any more than that because, it, you know, these things are so subjective. And, and, you know, tea is very similar to music in that you often want to draw out a particular type of... Uh, feeling, you know, there within. So there we go. Mmm, that is nice, subtle, and you know, and 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 sensible and balanced. Balanced. That's the word I'm looking for. Balanced. It's got nice, nice balance of flavors, and I really do like that. So, yeah, if you want something that's a little bit different, then uh, then I can certainly like. So, and and it and it tastes suitable. It tastes natural without milk like it doesn't feel like it's missing anything if you're having it without milk i've not tried it with milk people i know have tried it with milk and they do enjoy it uh, and they do tend to prefer it with milk so opinion i'm going to say is divided on the subject there but uh i would say worth a worth a go so uh that being said now um yeah so when it comes to um the content on this channel now so i'm going to sort of switch uh, uh s switch uh subjects um so i have uh, i've been in my new gig now for uh, for a couple of months and it, it's everything i hoped it would be it was wonderful now um as i have mentioned on i think previous live streams that this channel is not doing as well as it did like i think it was maybe about two or three years ago this channel was pulling in really good views and um and nowadays, it's uh, it's it's not doing so well. It feels like it's hit its peak, and that's perfectly fine. If you actually look at YouTube uh, in a lot of capacities, you'll realise or you'll notice that a lot of YouTubers tend to have rather sort of short-lived um, creative experiences on this platform. That they seem to be around for you know less than five years. They tend to sort of spend a few years building up, then they tend to have a big high point, and then once they're over that particular peak, it seems to you know it does seem to to decline. Very similar in in TV shows in that regard, whereas, you know, how many TV shows go on beyond five seasons and are still good? If you think about it, like, I will say that, you know, I, I quite enjoy Firefly, uh, but one of the best things that ever happened to it was it being limited to, to one season. Um, I genuinely think that that is, um, and the film as well, uh, Serenity. Uh, yeah, I think I think that 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 that's the best thing that could have happened to it for it. Uh, Joss Whedon is is well known for being able to do good character pieces and 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 not being so good at carrying the plot uh, for, for for long periods of time. So I think that you know Firefly just completely played into Joss Whedon's strength as a director, uh, and um and, and it was a good character piece, and uh and and that's really all it needed to be. Um, and I'm really you know like that that's a good thing uh, in general. So. Um, and then you look at something like, um, oh dear me, I'm gonna, I'm in a viper's nest when I start giving out examples here. Um, but yeah, like, like shows. I mean, yeah, shows do seem to, you know, TV shows do seem to wane after a period. And it's, it's very, you know, once you've gone to grips with the characters and once you've explored them, where do you go from there, really? Or, or, or the plot, you know, like, is a, you know, can you really sustain a plot over, you know? 
you know more than 25 to 50 hours it's, you know it's it's really not not easy to do so uh it does seem to me that that uh youtube is in, in a very similar kind of capacity it is very very kind of similar now there are of course exceptions to that rule um and this isn't me giving up because this is me just sort of uh, sort of realizing how you know, like sort of working all of all of this out, and um, it's. Um, I'm just noticing that the lighting in this video is going to be completely up and down uh, because the sun is sort of on its way down, um, and then I've got the sort of the interior lighting which is all fighting each other. So I do apologize for that, but uh, what, what are you going to do? I just want to kind of get this video out there, really, more over anything else since the time's available to me. It's a bank holiday weekend, and the weather is absolutely wonderful uh, but recording this in the middle of the day was going to uh <laughs> anyway that aside uh yeah so um now yeah so like like i say um the 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 idea of the smaller channel and by which i'm sort of referring to myself among other small channels is, is a very interesting actually thing to sort of look at and view because um in many ways i sort of know what to do and knew what to do to claw in loads of views um, on this channel and then loads of ad revenue and all that kind of stuff and decided not to do it. I decided that it was against what, what I wanted to do. Um, and that would have been to basically simply keep doing distro reviews day in, day out. Maybe not even proper distro reviews, just spinning them up in a virtual machine and seeing where they go. Because those videos, if you look at my channel, they're the ones that get the most views. But then again, uh, and I can put them together with, with very little effort if I choose to do so. Now, my most recent uh, distribution reviews have actually had a lot of effort. I spent weeks testing them and, and using them. And um, and as a result, you know, I, I'm very comfortable with what I say about them. But um, but I, I could just spin them up into a virtual machine and, and I would get probably similar numbers of views. And, 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 and part of that is because with the nature of YouTube, it's the title and the thumbnail that really do um, do matter. And to be fair, those distribution reviews actually do really well in terms of the YouTube algorithm. They're advertiser friendly. They're, they're not really, you know, they're not controversial or anything like that. Pe they have a really good watch time. People who do tend to watch them tend to have quite high attention spans. Uh, people like to comment on them because everyone's got their own interpretations of, of a distribution and what it's, you know, what, what, uh, what their take on it is. So, you know, they are like very good for YouTube. But the thing is, and this is me back referring back to the YouTube landscape of, of quite some time ago, is that, well, the differences between distributions nowadays are not really as great as they used to be. I think that for most people, you, you know, you can choose a distribution that you just like, that just works for you. And then, you know, you're not really missing anything, especially with flat packs, snaps, and app images. All distributions are really... You know, like the the key decision is how up to date do you want your 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 core repository software to be? Uh, you know, how much maintenance do you want to give it? And um, and, and and yeah, like I mean, I would say it's, it's it's largely down to your package manager. But even at this stage, with the number of you know with with flat packs and snaps and all of that, it's less of the issue that it used to be. Um, you know, you might make a decision based on which distribution has more up-to-date NVIDIA drivers, if you've got a NVIDIA card, but these are all very, you know, like minor things. At the end of the day, I've got Manjaro on this dist uh, on this computer here because I like to have the up-to-date, you know, OBS, I like to have up-to-date drivers for playing games and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Manjaro is absolutely wonderful. It's given me zero issues whatsoever. It has a nice uh, XFCE desktop, but the, KD, uh, the KDE Plasma one works really well as well, as does the Mate one. I do like the Mate one as well. So Manjaro uh, suits me really well there. For my laptop, I want something a little bit low, you know, less maintenance. And because I don't really play games or anything like that, I just need something that works. I've got Ubuntu Mate. It works well with the printer. And, um, and that's it. That's really it. Uh, it could, it would work just as well with Linux Mint. It would work just as well with any of the Ubuntu derivatives. Um, it would, and, and it worked all right with with Manjaro on it as well. Although Manjaro doesn't really work as nicely with with my printer. When it comes to printers, Debian-based distributions just just seem to give me less aggro on that one. So I, could, I I ran MX Linux on it without any problems as well. And the differences between these like they're they're largely philosophical. They're largely what defaults there are, but. If I'm completely honest, these days now, the, the whole Linux ecosystem is in a really healthy state that, um, that, that um, you know, just pick a distribution that you're comfortable with. You're not really missing anything out. Or, you know, um, 
it's uh, they're, they're all pretty good i mean okay with manjari you're gonna you're gonna want to have a better internet connection because you're going to be downloading more updates so if, if you have a slower internet connection you might want something you know ubuntu lts based um you might um but but really that's that's like the last that's the biggest you know that's the biggest difference i think manjaro has great um uh, you know, like a great native uh, set of packages in its uh, distributions repository. But then again, so does Ubuntu. So, and the Ubuntu-based distributions. And when I say Ubuntu-based distributions, you could also throw in Linux Mint into that one, Pop! OS. Um, and then even Solus isn't bad. You know, I tried Solus for a couple of weeks. That was, you know, that, 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 it, it, they all did the job and they all did the job pretty, pretty darn well. So, you know, no complaints here. And I think that talking about the different Linux distributions, really, it's, it's not as interesting as it used to be because distributions just do what they want. You know, they're just, <laughs> they all work. They're all fine. They're all good. If Manjaro went away tomorrow, I'd find something else with it, you know. Um, I, I, I will say that uh, from what I've seen of, of Arch, uh, pure Arch, um, that sometimes that you can you can have an update that is not necess that can can break your install. Now, I've not, I've not experienced, I don't think I've experienced that myself, but I have, I do know quite a few people that have gone through that. But if you back up properly, it's not really going to be an issue. Manjaro, for me, takes just a couple of, like, I don't know, like an hour or two to really set up properly. It's really not a problem. So, all things considered, um, yeah, it's it's um, you know I, I would generally recommend if you know if if my recommendations meant anything and they don't really maybe because I've I've you know used a few but there are still you know like I st like last time I tried Seuss was a, was quite some time ago, I mean Fedora's fine as well like you you like Fedora Fedora's fine and especially now that they bring in the um, you know you can you can pull in the proprietary software from RPM Fusion if if you so uh, desire it again makes it quite straightforward and and, and, and quite simple really. So uh, I, I don't know how many more distribution reviews that I'm going to be doing on, on this channel. I'm, you know, when it comes to talking about Linux, I'm probably going to be talking about some of the, some like more specifics to software, flat packs and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, if, 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 if such comes a time where flat pack is like the default way of releasing a piece of software, uh, which I, I, I probably hope that it does, if I'm completely honest, then, you know, it, it matters even less. And most of the software that I use on a day to day basis is, is available as a flat pack. And there's, of course, there's also Snaps as well. Um, and I don't, you know, I, I like Snaps. They're a great idea. They're certainly better than the PPAs from which was the, you know, the third party software um, de facto default that Ubuntu used before then. Um, I, but I suppose with, with Snaps, they're a little less, um, you know, they're, they're, they're a little bit more centralized in their function. But all things considered, um, that that does make it easy to for a lot of people, and it also makes it quite easy to um, you take care of things like uh, you know um, mal malware that that might uh, uh, might crop up as a problem and all that kind of stuff as well. But all of these th um, you know different package managers as well, they you know they, they're great when it comes to making sure that you've got the dependencies and all that kind of stuff. So you know it's all good, it's all good, and and with Linux distributions. Um, yeah, like it's uh, uh, the 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 differences are, are less important than they used to be. I think rabbiting on about this distribution versus that distribution really isn't helpful anymore. Um, and uh, and I think as a result of that, you know, views can can perhaps dip. I guess because it might not necessarily be a people thing. It could very well be a search engine thing. Search engine thing is that distributions are just very easy to pick up when it comes to search results. Um, you know, it's very difficult to find interesting and unique content through a search engine in, in a lot of ways because uh, it's great for giving you what you want. But if you don't, but if you want something, you know, unusual or you want to be surprised, then search engines really can't help you with that, can they? It comes from just stumbling across stuff organically and being recommended stuff by friends. Um, and some of the most interesting stuff that I've I've seen on on YouTube lately has been recommended by uh, by you chaps in stream. So, um, when it comes to moving forward, uh, what's uh, what's where we're going to be? Well, uh, first thing I do want to tell you guys is that I actually have been streaming quite a lot on Twitch and also here on YouTube and recently Mixer and DLive as well. Although I don't know if I'm going to be continuing to do those on an ongoing basis. We're just sort of trying them out now. So I'll put links to all of the places where I stream down in the description below. Now streaming is a lot easier because I can just pop on for a couple of hours and just, you know, chat with you guys, play a few games or that kind of stuff. And even though, you know, I play games as a bit of a 
a, a focal point for the streams. We often talk about stuff that's you know still in the Linux and open source space. So. Um, so if you know if you feel free to, to drop by um i don't stream on this channel because a lot of people who do watch the the more linuxy tech content uh are actually quite turned off by by the games and particularly the gaming live stream so i do notice whenever i do a gaming live stream i just drop a load of subscribers just completely boom uh, and i know that gardner the linux gamer also has such a similar uh, situation as well is that and actually I think I was talking to Hex about this the other day as well and it's like there is this weird juxtaposition this like people are not expecting that type of content and um, even you know from the cre content creators point of view streaming about Linux feels very similar to making a video about Linux in certain capacities but to the viewer the end user uh, it's um, it's substantially different so um, so all, all that considered um, I will put the channel that I do stream to down in the description below uh, for YouTube and also on Twitch as well. I like multi-stream, so the uh, so you don't have to make sure to follow all of them. Just follow the one that you want to see. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, and actually, interestingly enough, um, I de partnered with Twitch because Twitch doesn't actually like it when you multi-stream when you stream to more than one place at once. Um, but I decided that to be honest. Um, you know, given 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 that money is not really you know the primary issue of concern right now, I decided to departner and then just make sure that my streams are available on more platforms, so that those of you who don't really like Twitch or Amazon can can view it. Which is, uh, um, isn't that thoughtful of me? Isn't that thoughtful? Also, uh, interesting side note: I've actually demonetized this channel as well. Um, and the reason for that is, is simply because I can afford to do it n right now. Um, and I'm going to continue to do it for as long as I can afford it. Um, I'm not going to promise that I'm going to continue doing it forever. But um, because the thing is with, with the YouTube ad revenue is that uh, when it comes to like online stuff, it's actually surprisingly consistent. Okay, yeah, you do get adpocalypses and stuff like that. But um, but in reality, it gives you a month of the a day of the month where uh, money comes in. And, um, and it gives you sort of some degree of... of, of I don't want to say control over it, but it, it gives you some degree of regularity in terms of in terms of income. With Twitch, I never really made any money on it anyway, so I thought, well, you know, I, I'll de-partner, and, and then sort of that will encourage people to support other creators and stuff. I've also unpublished my Patreon as well, so if you did uh, donate to me on Patreon, thank you. That does mean a lot, and it really did help as well. Um, the um but since i can't you know promise you videos on a regular basis now it would just be unfair for me to 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 continue taking uh taking money through patreon so um i i genuinely do appreciate it you guys really do help me out there uh, and it does sort of protect you from an uh, you know an adpocalypse style event although uh, you know there there were it is quite common to get like um for a couple of months someone to subscribe and then to desubscribe on on or unsubscribe on on Patreon. So even with Patreon, it doesn't necessarily guarantee a regularity of income. Um, and in some cases, like if you know if if I took a week off or something on Patreon, then the Patreon subscriptions would dip, and then the importance of the ad revenue from anyway. Basically, I'm not worrying about that anymore. I'm demonetizing the lot because um, because it's uh, because I'm fortunate enough at the moment that I can I can afford to do so. So um, you guys feel free to to um, to any money that you would have given to me uh, to to pass on to uh, your favorite creators or your favorite software as well it's always good to support software uh, or your distribution there's plenty of linux distributions out there with patreon pages as well so um there are there there are you know more deserving causes than me right about now uh so so feel free to to um to go ahead with that if you do feel overwhelmingly compelled to uh to to, to give me money i guess <laughs> i've left um my uh, I've left some crypto wallets on uh, on my website chrisware.uk. Um so if you if you if you're desperate to if you're desperate to um to to support the channel in that way I guess uh then feel free and yes of course I support Dogecoin. Um or yes I accept with Dogecoin rather. Um but yeah so if you've got any spare Dogecoin fine but uh, don't 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 ever feel like I I don't think I have an, uh, no I never put anything behind a paywall. Um, oh no, I did. I think I put like the audio versions of some stuff behind a paywall. Anyway, there was some minor stuff behind a paywall. I think no, actually, yeah, no, maybe. Uh, I can't even remember. I don't think so. It was, certainly wasn't anything that was like would be missed. So, um, so there, there's all. Uh, so, but yeah, I'm. I'm um, I'm uh, I'm just going to be putting out some uh, some content on this channel when I can from time to time, uh, and it's going to be purely stuff 
that I make purely because I want to make it. Like I wanted to make this video uh, just to have a bit of a chat with you. And this might very well be a more sort of common style of video that you see on this channel where I just get in front of a camera and just have a cup of tea with you guys. Mm, that's delish. Um, so I did actually have an idea, and I'll be interested to to hear some feedback on this, about doing an, a, um, a Creative Commons uh, music show. Um, and I don't know how necessarily this would pan out initially, um, but it would be I would sort of seek out some artists that release their content, uh, Creative Commons. Um, obviously, I would attribute them, and I would uh, I would I would talk about them, and 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 maybe even have a chat with them, and sort of you know talk about their music in that regard. But also, of course, you know, uh, introduce you guys to some music that you might not necessarily be familiar with in the Creative Commons space. So Creative Commons being the sort of I guess the uh, the the art world's answer to um, to to open source uh, software licenses and the like, or free software licenses rather. So um, so yeah, it might be like an hour a month where I just go out, find some really nice uh, you know music that um, mu the artists have incredibly kindly decided to 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 give out to the world, and um, and give them maybe a bit of a signal boost and. Um, uh, and to try and sort of, you know, as a way to sort of encourage and be a positive, you know, be, you know, sort of a, a positive factor in uh, a community where they, you know, where people just want to get out their music and they don't, you know, it, it, it they don't want to hold on to the, um, uh, you know, they, they want, they want, well, Creative Commons, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, and there is, I've been, I've been looking around, there's a great website called uh, open.audio, it's a Funkwell instance, and uh, the music there is, um, is is uh, you know sort of Creative Commons. It's open, um, and a lot of it is uh, attribution required, non-commercial. Which is one of the reasons why I was a bit unsure about putting it on this channel and, and working on it originally was because it would have to be fully demonetized. So like it would be a fair amount of work, and I know money is it shouldn't have been the um, the the big deciding factor in that one as well. But now of course you know everything's demonetized, uh, and I wouldn't you know it wouldn't it would be a labor of love, not a um, a labor for money. Um, then it would, uh, you know, it, it sort of opened up the door to me as a possibility. Um, so yeah, I might just sort of have a chat with with you guys about some music and put some on, and, uh, and we can all listen to it together. And, and and maybe you guys might find something that you might enjoy. And a lot of these artists do have, um, you know, like uh, pages where you can tip them and donate them as well. So I'd of course, uh, you know, sort of throw that up for them. Um, but if you guys would would like that, and you know, I would curate. I wouldn't just put any. You know, I'd make sure that that it was really good stuff that I put forward to you. So, um, but yeah, and, it, and it, so it would be. You know, it'd be completely. You know, no sponsors or nothing like that. It would be pure music. You know, community music through and through. Um, just like this channel now is going to be pure sort of community chat through and through as well. So, uh, and actually another idea for 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 videos I did because I'm sort of looking at ways now to make videos that fit around this schedule. And one of them was that I could perhaps just have spend like an hour having a chat with you on the live stream about a similar set, you know set of topics to what I've been talking a little bit about today. Maybe less self-involved about where I've been and where I'm going and stuff like that. Maybe it might be about things like the state of package managers, state of gaming, all that kind of stuff. And um, and I just simply just have a bit of a chat, and then there might be a little bit of real-time feedback. I won't obviously focus on it too heavily because that can be a bit disjointing for a video. Um, but then yeah, I just roll out a video, maybe using the webcam there and. Um, I could get a, you know, I could maybe get an upgraded webcam and just have a little bit of a, um, have a, have a, you know, have a little bit of a, of a, of a chat and a, a sort of a podcasty type thing, but one that doesn't necessarily involve too much in the way of editing and and up, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It would be a little bit more raw, um, but um, but but uh, you know, it would still be, uh, you know, I don't know, it would work around my schedule a lot better and. Um, and a lot of you guys do seem to, you know, like the the more sort of the, the the more raw and uncut stuff. Um, you may have guessed this isn't no Linus Tech Tips style of channel. This has always been uh, something that has embraced the amateur, D, you know, DIY side of YouTube. My lighting rig here is like completely of just stuff that I bought secondhand from car boot sales, which might arguably be why this lighting is a complete disaster. I'm looking at the preview now. And it's, it's, I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry. Because the sun's going down, I can see it now, is blue sunset, the, um, yeah, the, you know, it's the sort of the bluey orangey sky. It, I mean, it looks wonderful, but it's just not a great light source now, is it? Um, and, and then all the, all the sort of artificial light is just coming from this side. It's, um, 
oh, it's a disaster. Oh, it's a disaster. But you know what? I mean, it. do you guys care? No, I bet you guys don't. I bet you guys don't. But uh, actually, going back to the smaller YouTuber politics world, I've, I've watched a couple of videos on the world of, of, of small YouTubers. And there's a lot of small YouTubers, I'm sure I've been there at times, where you... You know, you get frustrated at like a limited amount of channel growth. You get, you know, you get a little bit frustrated that 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 the, the number of people aren't watching your videos is comparable to the amount of work you put into it. Nowadays, of course, um, I I I don't I don't really care. In fact, there's another channel that I run called Project Chronicle, which me me and some friends put together back in it was at the very beginning of 2013, and we just make videos together about all kinds of things and. Um, and we have a whale of a time doing it. Like, it's so much fun. And I go back and watch those videos just to, like, relive those memories. We've got some, you know, there's some uh, multiplayer gaming videos on there. Uh, my friend Abigail does an entire series talking about tea, much better than anything that I could put together. Um, me and Heather have got some uh, some portal, uh, you know, um, co-op videos. Um there's loads in there. We've even made some like pseudo, you know, some like fake documentaries about uh, aliens and zombies and stuff like. That. Oh, it's a, it's a lovely little channel. Doesn't get any views. Each, you know, there there are videos on there with less than ten views, I think. Certainly, like it's it's a it's a rarity for any video on there to get more than hundred views. And you know what? I don't give a damn. Don't give a damn. My heart really is in that channel. And when a video on that gets, uh, you know, like 30 views, that to me is better than a video on this channel getting a thousand. You know, like, like to me, like it's it's just even e even having a small number of maybe a dozen or so people that enjoy that channel, that's enough. That's enough. That is, so to me, it's, it's completely enough. And uh, to a degree, it's the same thing about the gaming uh, with Werewolves channel, my gaming channel here. Is that, Yeah, like it's it's got very few views. It gets slightly more views, um, especially when it comes to like I play popular games like Deus Ex and, and Vampire the Masquerade. Games which are like, you know, cult classics. Um, yeah, they, um, you know, they, they get a small number of views. Uh, but really, I put it out there because originally, you know, it was a, a mirror stream for, for streaming on Twitch. But now, given all the hoo-ha of Twitch and uh, and, and, and YouTube and, and, and Mixer and all this kind of stuff, it is nice to actually have like a place for gaming that isn't uh, that isn't Twitch. If I'm completely honest, like, like, uh, even though when, yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to have a, a mirror. It's nice to have a foot in both camps in that regard as well. But again... Uh, you know, when it comes to streaming, you know, not that many people uh, watch me stream, but, well, you know, but a small handful, maybe a dozen or so. But that's enough. You know, that's like it's a small group of, of, of us where we can get together, have a chat about the, you know, the, the drama of the day or whatever it is and just, you know, hang out. And um, and I really enjoy that. I really do enjoy that. And I think that if this channel ever did actually blow up to several million, I, I would have completely lost that. I would have completely lost the, the connection I have with you guys. And, um, and I do feel that with this channel as well. Like, I do feel like, um, you know, well, I, now that I write for, for a newspaper as well, it, 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 there's this weird sort of uh, sort of feeling that I kind of have towards it all, where it's like, you know, you, you're, you're almost kind of like friends with a lot of people that you'll never meet and never know. And especially when it comes to the newspaper, because it's a printed newspaper. So... Uh, that sounds weird to say to have to sort of point that out in this day and age. It's like because there are so many sort of newspapers that are online, which mm, you know so, some some might be more glorified blogs than newspapers, but whatever. Um, and, and some newspapers like will be completely different online than than they are on print anyway. Um, like have a look at like the Daily Mail or so, like I, I know Daily Mail. I'm invoking all kinds of, uh, <laughs> but just by even mentioning the the, the newspaper's name, but. Um, Hang on a minute, can I just check? No. Damn it, I thought I was going to get lucky and I could use this as a secondary light. Hold on a second. No. No, I thought, I thought I had a spare light with batteries in it. Possibly. Um. Nah, don't think so. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> but the uh, the the poor lighting in this video is uh, is kind of uh, getting to you know it's kind of kind of kind of a bit irritating at this stage. But anyway, but yeah, um, it's like you know w working with in, in a printed newspaper is that you know there are people that you know pick up the newspaper every week and they'll read it and that'll be 
you know, like a for many people, it'll be a a, a very you know, it'll, it'll be their main connection to the town. It'll be their, the way that they re- receive, like, so much, you know, important news for them that, I don't know, like, I, I kind of, it kind of sort of, like, it, it hits you kind of on a very sort of, sort of emotional level in that, like, you know, you have that kind of uh, connection with people. Um, it's very difficult to explain. And I kind of feel that here, that, that it's like, that, that a lot of you guys... Um, especially on stream as well like a lot of people you know they go to sleep hearing the sound of my voice and that's um i i don't know like i'm, I'm i find that incredibly endearing and wonderful so um and uh, and, and there'll be a lot of people who who read pick up the paper and and they and they you know rely on everyone who makes that paper to to sort of you know uh to 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 relay the events of the of the town to them and and it I don't know that 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 just if it, it feels um very like a very important job I guess it feels like a very um you know people trust you and that's important and people uh you know have this this connection with you and that's important so um so for all of that it's um I just want to let you know guys that you know I um you know I, I feel that way about you you know and um and it does mean a lot on on a level that can't be quantified by likes or or views or ad revenue or anything like that um and it was the thing that you know that that, that, that actually moved me to to making you know digital media in the first place is that you know i i you know i i, I wanted to 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 be that part of 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 your lives it was it was really you know sounds sounds incredibly dopey when when i say it out loud but it it generally you know genuinely you know is 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 what i want to be and uh, and 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 what i aim to do um and whether it's on digital media whether it's on print publication or or even podcasts or anything like that like that's um that that's you know that's that's the sort of the the driving force behind it all i think um, and that's why this channel has always remained a little bit raw, uh, and and, um, and and sort of unpolished in that regard is because it it's, it's it harkens back to the old, you know, early two thousand ten ish YouTube where where it was like that and where it was 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 more real and we didn't have all these, you know, fake weddings and uh, <laughs> and and all that stuff and um, and the drama was real. <laughs> And it wasn't there to to put on you know multi million dollar boxing fights or anything like that. It was it was it was more human. It was more real, and it was uh, and 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 it's you know parts of it still are parts of it still are. So um, so anyway, guys, um, I think I'm going to wrap it up there because I want to actually get on and do some streaming tonight. Um, I did put up a poll, so I think the results of that are in now. And this lighting is really getting up to me, but. Um, you know, I've really enjoyed making this video, and it reminds me of when I used to make these long videos of where I used to blither on about uh, all kinds of, of nonsense and stuff like that. But um, you are probably on this channel are going to see a little bit less of me, um, and and I'm going to try and find ways that um, I can I can make content throughout my schedule. Maybe that might be, you know, like I, I, I make a video a bit like this, but it'll be like straight live streaming. Uh, maybe it might be that music show. Maybe I might do something scripted, but... The thing about doing something scripted is it would have to be about something really that you can make a scripted video about. When I was doing my Game of Thrones videos uh, over on the Project Chronicle channel, that that was a, a medium or that was a series that suited itself to scripted uh, content because I had something concise. I'd, uh, you know, I had like a distilled idea that I wanted to get across. Here, I just want to kind of have a bit of a chat with you guys and just catch up with you and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and if I do do the music idea, um, I could be. Pers- I think I could very well be persuaded to pop it up on SoundCloud as well, just so that you guys could then possibly listen to it uh, on the go as well. It would be primarily music with a, just a little bit of commentary on it. Um, and don't worry, I'm not going to do that annoying thing that radio DJs do where they talk over the music. That's just a disaster. No, I will be completely respectful of the artist's decisions. But all things considered. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to cut this video. Like me looking for that light, that's going to stay in there. Like I'm going to just just make a point of that. Um, I had two of them, and I'm sure if that one doesn't have batteries, the other one does. But whatever. 
<laughs> it's too late now, I'm wrapping it up. Um, and some of my highest viewed videos on this channel are actually just quite, you know, but uh, but as you can see, I've got two like audio sources here. I've got so if I do it if I do it through like OBS, I can actually do, uh, I can actually just sort of roll it through. It's a, it, it, the product. I might have to buy a better webcam, um, which is fine. Like I've had this webcam now for like five or six years. I think I think it might be time to actually get a, a better webcam anyway. But considering that I'm only a little square in the corner of a. Um, uh, uh, you know, a, st a live stream now. It doesn't seem the most, uh, you know, it, it doesn't seem the, the best idea of purchase, maybe. Uh, I might upgrade the microphone, but i got to admit, I like the Blue Yeti. I've got another one up there. Um, I can't, I don't know what brand it is, um, which is also uh, quite good as well. I, I actually quite like the Blue Yeti. I believe the Blue Yeti is a, a dynamic microphone. Is that what you call them? Whereas the Yeti, the yeah, the Blue Snowball is a dynamic uh, microphone, whereas the Yeti, Blue Yeti, is a condenser microphone. So you get slightly different sounds. Um, and I did actually kind of like the idea of having a, a you know, a, a non-condenser microphone. But anyway, that, that that's, that's one for another day. Uh, thank you guys very much for joining me. I'll make sure to, um, to put the live stream um, links in the description because I live stream, I try and live stream a couple of times a week. Um, I don't think I did live stream this week because, and, and, and you know, because sometimes it gets busy. There's a lot of summer events and things like that, which do cause, uh, you know, cause me to work weekends and lates. But um, but I get that time back, so then that will be when I probably stream. So I've got some I got some time uh, back. Uh, I got some time owed to me, so I'm, I'll spend that streaming. I think because it's like I say, like sometimes you know, I I it's something I really enjoy, even um, even though not so many people. Uh, you know, like enough to make it worthwhile, enough to make it fun. And I think, to be honest, when it comes to streaming, it's very re possible to have too many, you know, people. You can have the chat just whizzing up. And, and at least here, you know, the way that it's set up and with the, the audience size that I've got, we could just have a nice conversation that I know that I'm never going to be streaming in the darkness to no one. But at the same time, I always know that I'm also going to be able to, to hold down a conversation with you guys as well. So, um, yeah, I... Um, I think it's it's all in a good place now. It's all in a really good place, and um, maybe this channel's past you know hit its peak. But I'm still going to make videos for it because I still want to make videos for it. Maybe its peak is yet to come. Maybe you know I'll come up with a golden idea, but uh, that uh, that will will take it off. Does it matter? Probably not. Um, I, d I don't necessarily want this channel to be successful for the sake of it being successful. Um, I, I you know I want it to be you know, successful because of, of, of what I put into it. And I think this is it. This is like, sorry, I, I know I'm supposed to be wrapping up, but um, I, I, I failed to make this point earlier, is that a lot of smaller YouTubers kind of know what they need to do to get their channel bigger and to grow it. But a lot of them, including myself, often can't bring ourselves to to, uh, to make that content. Maybe we just don't enjoy making it. Um, and, and And so... We sometimes feel a little bit frustrated that our channel isn't growing as fast as we want, yet still stubbornly refuse to do what is required to make it uh, to 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 build on, on on that success. Because if you just spend your you know day in day out making YouTube videos about subject matters that you don't uh, you're not enthused by that you don't want, then um, then it just becomes like another job, and you might as well just have another job because YouTube don't pay that well. <laughs> so. Um, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. Like I've I've been chatting with people who have lot a lot higher subscribers than I do, and even your million dollar YouTubers, uh, some of them like really struggle. Especially like if you know if you can if you watch a YouTuber and there is any degree of controversy to their character or to the content that they make, they're they're not doing so well on the money. The only YouTube channels that are doing particularly well are the multi you know the million dollar channels that are very you know t that you would see on TV. And it's the TVification of YouTube, and I don't really like that, to be honest. Like, I I got into YouTube because I was watching those long form Let's Play videos uh, back in the day, uh, which was, you know, that was what was, getting, you know, like the long form stuff where you just watch someone play a game from beginning to end and just chat their way through it. Like, I love that content. Check out uh, if you want to watch one of my biggest inspirations on what got me into YouTube and specifically into YouTube gaming. Check out Variax V E R. I A X YouTube.com forward slash Variax, V E R I A X, um, and his interactive uh, Morrowind series, like 
it completely inspired me to even get in front of a camera and just make make YouTube content. Um, gaming content as well but also just any content like it was you know his character and his relationship with the audience a relationship he's maintained to this day because that series was uh, 2009 i believe it started in 2009 so you know we are really talking about um you know 10 years ago and very has actually managed to sustain a, a really amazing relationship with his audience and i started probably about 2011 making content for myself and made content for other people before then on, on YouTube but um, but you know and, and, and I feel that I've still managed to keep a, a relationship with, with you guys although you know a lot of people come in and a lot of people go out as well so there we go there's some thoughts and, and, and thank you guys for for sticking with this video and I'm gonna do something which I haven't done in years mmm yes since we're since we're mulling over the past I'm going to put a code word at the end of this video. This code, the code word is going to be, let's see, it's going to be completely unrelated to the contents of this video. What have I got here? Um, pen. All right, I just picked up a pen. Oh, by the way, these are the Bic uh, gel pens. They're wonderful to write with. It's like writing with a fountain pen, but with all the comfortable, with all the um, benefits of, of writing with a biro. So just when you so so rather so the code word is so so write a sentence right with the word pen in it but try and like hide it so it's like oh my f favorite type of pen is blank like i like writing with a fountain pen i like writing. just just have the word pen in your uh comment and then i'll know you made it to the end of the video but don't tell anyone like a secret it's a secret for all the people that have made it to the end of the video uh, boy, this lighting is just getting worse and worse, isn't it? I think sometimes the uh, the little screen for the camera uh, makes it look worse than it is, and it might actually, might actually, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll be better when it comes out, but, yeah, whatever. Um, so anyway, guys, uh, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for being a part of my life, and thank you very much for letting me be a part of yours. I'll still be around, certainly on the stream. I'll be streaming tonight, although this video won't go up the night that I'm streaming. Um, but uh, but you guys are wonderful and you've you've been a really big part of my life and I hope you continue to uh, to 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 be. Uh, so that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Links for everything will be down in the description below. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you have been absolutely wonderfully, unimaginably awesome. Take care now.